And again. Yeah. Probably, it probably happens because I, I do something, you know, and then I stop doing that thing. <laughs> Hi, we're back. Uh, my internet died for a second there. I demanded too much of it. But we're okay. Uh, I've lost everyone's cameras. But we will get that back, hopefully. Uh, okay. We're back. <laughs> Alright, let's see if pasting Avain's face onto this page causes it to break again. <gasps> it didn't work. Did he appear? I don't see. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to risk that happening again. Um, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, somebody was saying something. When uh, I dropped yeah, out. I just wanted to interject really quick to let you know, because I noticed or the five rolls that you made. Uh, Vapos is not drinking any of the wine. He's asking for water, but he'll happily eat whatever's put in front of him. Okay. Unlike Griff, who happily eats and drinks whatever's put in front of them. Um, Vapos? Maybe it's something in the air. Some kind of perfume of pollen. But you feel a little woozy, a little more relaxed than usual. Hmm. Or maybe it's something in the Dire Mushroom Burger. Who can say? Max, just... I, I, you know what? I know you heard me. I, 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 I don't know why I'm clarifying. I, just, I am drinking now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you. Yeah, okay. I did. Um, uh, you as well are, are, are starting to feel certain effects. Um, but of course, um, you know... I feel like Bliss would be a little bit tense about um, eating food in such a place. He's still uncomfortable. Um, he's, he's, been, he's been nibbling at a salad. But, but you know, he's now he's eaten the food, he's drunk the wine, and he's accepted a gift. So, you know, if there's a problem... Um, <laughs> you know... Oh, did I mention Bliss's bed is inside of a ring of mushrooms? Um, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, Avain, um, at a certain point after, um, uh, kind of, he's been looking around the room, he's been watching you guys, not in, not in a menacing way, just kind of like trying, you, you know, you get the feeling like he's serious about having fun um he um lifts himself off he has a kind of a, almost like a throne it's really just a sort of an armchair over here um he lifts himself off of the throne his vines grow out from underneath it crawling off of the walls and um there's a sort of a uh you know a, a humorous cheer that goes up as he then deposits himself down amongst you folks um, and that's actually going to be next to Mavra, whom he offers a tankard produced from um, a nearby uh, cask. And he says, um, Madam Dwarf, I could not but notice you are quiet. I wish to offer you Something that may make you think of home. I hope it is not too forward of me. And he offers you a tankard. Thank you. I take a sip of it. The tankard itself is a finely worked piece of silverware. Um, a very elvish in style. But this beer... That is dwarven, and not only is it dwarven, 
It is... Uh, it is Beatles Brew, uh, which is a extraordinarily uh, fine beer. Um, and My quite rare. Open wide, and I say, "Thank you again." <laughs> uh, he a a a a a grin, a very uh, pleased smile, uh, creeps over his face, and he says, "You are more than welcome. I hope that you will tell me if it is." Being kept well. I am not a master of the poor myself, but I try. And he pours okay. himself uh, a, another tanker. Go ahead, sorry. Yes, very good. Excellent. And he settles in. Um, could I ask you a question? But, of course. Um, might, might you know of a way to send a valuable package to someone? A package to someone? I assume you mean secure and yes, a safe, a safe way. Yes. Over a long distance. Yes. Mm. Perhaps it could be done by a person who could walk through trees. Are there trees where you wish to send the package? There may be trees near where I'd like to send it, yes. It's under a mountain, right? Hmm. But then, I do not know how valuable this package may be. Quite valuable. Hmm. He winks at you. And he chuckles, uh, an even bigger smile crossing his handsome face. He says, um... You know, my friend, Krakir, perhaps could help. And where, could, where would I find him? He is far. But within reach of myself. I could perhaps transfer the package to him and ask him to transfer the package wherever you wished it to go. Hmm. Or, if it is not too large, perhaps I could simply be of service and walk it through the trees. I, um, I take out, um, a bag of gold and show it to him without opening it. I say, is this too big? Um, it weighs 10 pounds, I think. Ten pounds of gold. <laughs> um, I think not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it could be done. 
Perhaps I, tomorrow. That would be wonderful. And how long will you be staying with us? I'm, I'm not sure you've decided. Let me know when you do decide. For it has been long since I had the lovely company of one of your bearing. Uh, okay, thank you. You are very welcome. May I get you anything else? I'm good, thank you. You are. You've been very helpful. Very good. Miss Mevra. He gives you a little space. But you feel his, uh, he, every time your eye catches his, he winks at you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do while this is going on? I'm going to be doing something after we retire to our rooms. Go for it. Yeah, so after we uh, party hardy through the night, uh, Brooke was certainly among those who were uh, Sorry. dancing. Sorry, I just hmm? Is, it... do you, okay. is there something you want to do at the party? No, I think Nico's trying to do something, but it's like some. Oh. Mark! Try again. You guys can't hear me again. Yeah. I hear you, there I hear you. Okay. I was so trying to say, um, so Bliss took a drink and he, he can feel the effects. He's been nibbling on a salad and he can start to feel the effects. And I think at first he's trying to just chalk it off to it's, it's alcohol. It just, that's what it does to you. Like this is normal. But I think as the night goes on, especially seeing the behavior of the other people, like not, not us, but like the, the, the folks that are from here mm -hmm. he's it's all just connecting way too much like the way they're acting the, the the way the food is feeling the scent that he can't get out of his nose i think he is going to is there is there someone nearby um that is from this place that's sitting next to me or near near me Yeah. Okay. The 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 almost the entire population of thirty. <laughs> thirty. I think it's thirty six. Uh, uh, is is in the, in this room. So yes. Okay. Um. I would like to turn to the closest resident of this place, uh, whoever that may be, and. Bliss will, 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 you know, flash a nice smile and he will just say, this, um, this vintage and this food is spectacular. Um, am I, do I, who, to whom do I owe, uh, thanks for such delicious, such a delicious meal? Um, the elven lady, um, giggles at you um and uh your horns and uh says uh why the bounty of the forest of course oh really uh do you happen to know exactly 
how these are made. I'm very curious. They, they, it, I don't, I don't think I've tasted something like this before. It, it's very, it's a very particular feeling to it. I was wondering if you could tell me more about where it comes from. The wine or the food? Let's start with the wine. She says, well, the wine, of course, is brewed by, uh, or um, made by Avain himself. I see. Um, Some of the vintage comes from the Feywild. There's like, you know, like in movies when like the person talking just freezes for a second, but like their facial expression doesn't change. They just kind of have a moment where they just like eyes stream. Yeah. Um, he goes, he kind of hiccups. Really? Oh, that's so exotic. Um, is that where the food comes from as well? No. Um, that's a bit of a question. How we're going to uh, get meat? Not that there's any meat here, but um, uh, Yezdov's parents were uh, the hunters in our community. Oh, I see. But um, no, these are these are mostly grown here. But some of those grapes, that that kind of sense of beauty and openness growth that those flavors suffuse the wine i find don't you yes i do it's a very very powerful um very powerful taste i wonder i i i you 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 have me endlessly um enthralled my dear could you tell me more about your people's relationship to the Feywild. I have a very little experience and I'm very curious to know more about um, more about that this such a mysterious and mystical place where do you often do, do do the people here often um, interact with the Feywild or travel to the Feywild? Is there he oh. comes around conspiratorially and he kind of leans forward and he goes is there perhaps a, a gateway to the Feywild here in this place? Not in this tower, no. But, um... The, uh... Um... The Nalar Ulana is not far. And adventurers sometimes travel long distances through trees into the, into the Feywild. Fascinating. Um, and then they come here and bring us oh. beautiful presents. Do you have a beautiful present for me? Um. <laughs> <laughs> You catch me off guard, dear lady, but perhaps I do. Um, My name is Anastriana. What's yours? It, it, um, you may call me Bless, and he will reach forward, and if she'll let him, he'll take her hand and give it a kiss. What a beautiful name. Thank you. I picked it myself. All the more so. Yes. <laughs> um, I may not have any... Well, actually, now that I say that, um, let me look at what I've got. I have a lot of things, actually. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? I, I, I have an idea. This is both. I don't have anything for you at the moment, but seeing as you've been so kind to me and, and shared so much with me in this moment, um, I am a bard. Of... Oh, a bard. How interesting. Yes. 
Yes. In his brain, uh, he's not saying this out loud, but in his brain, Bliss is thinking, yes, if you can't tell from the all of me. Um, and then he says, um, yes, um, and you have inspired me to come up with a special song just for you. So I'm going to take some time to write a special, a special little song just for you because you've been such a good, such a kind host, hostess to me, and I greatly appreciate it. I hope that that satisfies. I, I, I do admit that you, I'm, I'm, you've cut me to the quick, quick, but I will do my best. I will endeavor to write something that will, um, that will uh, serve to repay my, repay the debt that I owe to you for your wonderful service to me tonight and being so open. Well, I'm and, far uh, from satisfied, but that sounds very flattering. No one's ever offered to write me a song before. Hey, Avi! She yells across the room. He's gonna write me a song! Avain lifts the tankard out of which he is uh, drunking, drinking his own dwarven beer. Bliss just laughs, like a really pretty laugh, and he just and he just uh, says, "Well, my dear, I think I shall continue to partake of this wonderfully infused wine and food, food and uh, and continue to enjoy the evening." Think I, As I think about your song. <laughs> think I think I got a lucky roll with the uh, not waking the baby there. <laughs> uh, Bliss will, um, I mean, he'll probably engage her in idle conversation, you know, over time. But okay. he is very, very noticeably not touching the wine anymore. <laughs> and um, okay. he's keeping a close eye on the others in the party. Who mm -hmm. are still drinking. He's not saying anything to them yet, but he's keeping an eye on them. Good night, Danielle. Thank you for playing. I hope uh, you, were, you were here enough to hear that we were talking about traveling through the Feywilds. <laughs> All right. Um... Okay. Well, this blue-eyed, moderately attractive woman seems to have uh, set her sights on you a little bit, Bliss. <clears throat> Very well, but she's also playing the room. She what? She's also playing the room. And she's not Fair the enough. only one. Fair enough. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> That's all I was going to do. Okay. Anything else, guys? All right. So you are given rooms or beds, at least. Um, there's these sort of partitions um, on this level of the tower so that uh, you can have a bit of privacy between the, the various beds. Um, and you can, like, take your, your gear off and your, your mud-stained boots and just kind of toss them into... Um, uh, into these uh, barrels or, or crates or whatever's um, piled up about. And um, you can, you know, the party dies down and uh, you can drift off to slumber. After most folks have gone to bed, yes, breath is sitting up. I reach into my pack mm. and I pull out the strange gift, the blessing we receive. Okay. My mind goes back to the conversation I had earlier in the evening with Bliss. <laughs> okay. My mind turns to thoughts of the sea. How, with all the time that's passed, while my sea family will always be with me, they'll always be part of my memory, 
In a way, I've really found a new family here with the Wanderers. Maybe it's time to let them go. But one thing that I can never let go is the sea. And so I'm going to take the gift of the Magog into myself with the intent of establishing that connection to the sea. Mechanically speaking, switching from a barbarian from the path of the ancestral guardian to path of the storm herald. Whoa. Whoa. Yo. That's amazing. Sorry, I, I meant to say that's awesome. That is super cool. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you can absolutely do that. <laughs> so, yes, a metamorphosis takes place uh, overnight. Your dreams are fitful and full of storms. Uh, the faces of your crewmates fade um, and are replaced by roiling clouds in your dream. Although they can still be seen in the flashes of lightning. And uh, the storm is fully a part of you at the end of that. Wow. That is really something. Transformation! Metamorphosis! Nice. <laughs> I wake up and find I have turned into an enormous bug. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, before Vapos goes to sleep, there's also something that he's wanting to do. Okay. Um, given that he's uh, feeling a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more relaxed, a little less cautious, um, he is going to, or he is going to take out that uh, hollow canine tooth and the or, and the bone dagger okay and I seem to recall you saying that he had a bit of a com or, um, or a very minor compulsion with those two objects yes and here in the tower in uh, the moonlight that filters through the ruined walls and arrow slits the dagger shifts and changes shape slightly. And uh, it becomes a kind of a long, smooth, um, almost like a, uh, like a skinning knife, razor sharp, still made of bone. And if I remember correctly, the or what I was wanting to do with the or with the tooth was, uh, or was fill it with a few or with a couple drops of blood. That's right. That is the very minor compulsion that you have. Yeah. Uh, so Vapos is going to prick his finger with the dagger and drop a couple of drops of blood into the tooth to fill it. Okay. He does that at what point in the night? <laughs> uh, probably shortly before he's planning to go to sleep, just like as he's, or like, or like, uh, or like, you know, before, or before actually going to bed, but just kind of as a, or just kind of as a 
final thing, because it's kind of something that's been on his mind for a while, and now he's feeling like he's kind of let his guard down a little bit. I like how Vapus has been part of our group for about a two, maybe three months, and he's already on the, I'm gonna get cursed this. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I'm only doing this specifically because Mac said that I'm letting my guard down tonight. Mmm. <laughs> uh, breath's just rubbing off of you. A <laughs> mist flows out of the tooth the blood becoming a kind of a cloud of vapor. The tooth stands upright on your palm as though drawn by a, an invisible magnet. This cloud of smoke shifts and changes and coalesces into the shape of a person. Um, he, I mean, it's still like a cloud of vapor. Mm -hmm. So you can't really um, tell too much ab about his features exactly, but it's a very thin sort of ma masculine figure um and you know the the this this vapor um kind of the moisture from your blood has made a lot of vapor and it's it's kind of formed you see these like sort of swooping sleeves and this big collar Uh, y'all are still awake, most of you. <laughs> um, so, you can see this happening by the bed that Vapos has, uh, lain down in. Um. Hey, Vapos. What's going on, my man? I thought there's... I've been wanting to try something for a while, and now it just sort of seemed like the right time. Um, you sure I, didn't try it? What? <sighs> that? I'm not you sure. You have summoned to be me, and I have risen again. <laughs> Is this just a theme with you guys? Is this just a theme? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Akiri has a mental tally of, like, the fastest point someone's gotten cursed. And I think Brett still holds the record of that first or second session where he touched the guy. Um, I yeah. touched it second, though. Avain comes around the corner um, with two uh, ladies in nightdresses. Um, as well as, um, uh, Silly Bean Fastfoot, um, who also seems to be accompanied by a uh, barely dressed elvish lady. Um, and, uh, they're all kind of like, what is happening? The vaporous figure is still addressing you, Vapos, and it says, your Speech is uh, strange and uncouth, but it will serve. Now, you must go. Travel to the northeast of here. That is where your destination lies. <laughs> And who are you? Who am I? You do not know, but you have called me back to life. 
<laughs> you are as foolish as you look. <laughs> Slave. I am sorry, but I am certainly not your slave. I simply uh, felt, or I simply desired to uh, see or see what would happen. I, I am Mordred. Von Zagram, the Corrupter. <laughs> Hear my name and tremble, mortal. Did I knowledge history that name? Uh, Mordred Von Zagram, the Corrupter, go. 21. Yes, um, he was a powerful sorcerer in the desert, um, in the northeastern part of the wildlands um, during the um, about uh, 300 years ago or so and uh, the tale said that he used to drink the blood of his slaves until he was finally uh, destroyed, uh, disintegrated, actually, um, by uh, Hatu uh, the White. Oh, you're that old vampire. The one who was, you know, handily defeated. Hendley, what? <laughs> Wait a moment. Whose blood has summoned me back? You know, I'm beginning to think that this wasn't such a good idea after all. And I'm going to, or I'm going to uh, try to, or I'm going to try to uh, slash the shadow dragon dagger uh, wait, minutes. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Perhaps I have given the wrong impression. I you am here... You seem to insist that I was going to be your slave, and I'm not particularly interested in such an arrangement. Let's... then let's make another arrangement. I will help you acquire great power and treasure. I've heard this one before. You don't want to do that. I will reveal secrets to you. You must go. You must go to the temple beneath the sands. We've already been there. You've already been there. Yeah. Sorry, Bathos, it was before your time. But, um, yeah, it was uh, full of basilisks. This is impossible. For we, I, that is not possible. No, it's the big temple underneath the sand with all of the magic pools and stuff. The giant ruby? Is that the same one? There are no such things. Well, clearly, 
there a giant mouth that spit us out in that one too? Yeah, yeah, that was the creepy mouth one. Well, okay, so there's two temples beneath the sand. It's a big world. <laughs> I well, assure you, this you would be a fool not to heed me. Bliss will speak up at this point and say, Vapors, I, I can tell you with immense certainty that any powerful being that offers you more power in exchange for their, for a service it does not have your best interest in mind. This is not this you should not take listen to this creature and you should not do anything it says. I am inclined to agree, especially since the first thing it said was that I was a fool for summoning it. The but ancient her... vampire lords still rule. Their power ripe for the taking. I already know far too many secrets about far too terrifying of powers. I would rather not be burdened with even more so. And I'm going to go ahead and stab him with the dagger. Okay. Indeed, it works as you expected. The dagger causes the smoke to just dissipate. A sort of uh, vaporous explosion. And then the tooth stops standing upright and just falls down. I think we should keep him like a tea in a bottle and just like whenever we maybe need like a vampire or something, we just like pull it out. He mostly seemed to want to give directions. We can use him like a GPS. <laughs> You will turn left at the common intersection, fools. <laughs> <laughs> hey Siri, how do we get to that temple under the sands? Yeah, so so Vapos is just going to turn to the rest of the group and say, Well, I suppose that didn't turn out too badly after all. Well, compared to how most of it goes down for our group, and by our group I mostly mean me. That was remarkably calm. Yeah, no, that's no, what we no, no. have. Um, um, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask. I, I didn't quite catch what you said there, Bella. Oh, um, I said that's a really cool dagger you have there. It worked like a charm. Indeed. Thank you very much for telling me what you knew about its usage. That, that proved quite helpful. Um... Okay, I wasn't going to say anything about this, but given what I've seen tonight and what I know about you all, I feel like I need to bring this up now before you guys get yourself into any more trouble. So I don't know if the rest of you have picked up on this, but there is very much some level of fey influence on this little community. It seems that certain that adventure that there's a gateway to the Fey world relatively nearby, and that uh, adventurers are known to come here from there and bring things with them, like grapes used for, in the wine that we drank tonight. I would be remiss if I did not stress that anything having to do with the Fey wild is not to be trusted and very dangerous, and. Frankly, I extend that to the entirety of this place and all of its people. So I strongly suggest that we leave here as soon as we can. And if we do end up staying, that we be very careful who we talk to, who we trust, and most certainly what we drink. I have felt unease of this place and I have sensed the phase presence here. I, I'm not comfortable. I thought perhaps perhaps we could ignore it. Perhaps we would be alright, but 
from what I've seen, we can't. I, I, I simply cannot sit and not say something. I don't trust this place or these people. I think we should leave soon. I will say, it, it doesn't seem so bad. I didn't drink any of the wine, and I'm feeling perfectly fine. I drank a little bit, and I could... And I definitely sensed some effects. Not that it's... I'm not saying that they've poisoned us or anything like that. I just... I don't trust anything that, and trust me when I say, I know plenty about them, enough about them, more than probably any of you, to know that they should not, like we cannot trust them or anything that has to do with them. There is definitely some of their influence in, in, in the food and drink tonight. And I mean, if, 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 frankly, the, the elf woman I spoke to flat out admitted it. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's a secret. Has anyone else, spoken to you all about anything to do with the Fae since we've been here? Um, not really. I mean, I did hear that there was a um, Fae Wild portal nearby, but I don't know. It seems like as long as we stay away from it. All right. I don't, I don't presume to tell everyone what to do. I just, just... Well, I, I think I heard Mavra say that she had something she wanted All to right. take care of tomorrow. Am I back? Yeah, we didn't lose you. I got disconnected. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, Liz was just saying, um, uh, they are known for their seductive and deceptive magic. And so even though things might look fine and look really pretty and nice here, I guarantee it's not all that it seems. Well, I don't think that we can afford the time to stay here very long. So it's not like I'm planning to settle in here like we did in Westhead. But if neighbor needs to do something tomorrow, I think we could stand to spend maybe one more night here. We'll see how long tomorrow takes and uh, go from there. But your point is well taken, that we shouldn't stay here too long, nor should we get overly involved with the people here, based on the proximity of the Feywild. I think that we'll all be on our guard. He kind of gives a meaningful look to Vapos and the, and the, the thing he, just, he was holding, and just says, I certainly hope so. And that's, that's the end of what he has to say. Uh, well, as your conversation winds down in the, uh, moonlit brothel slash tavern and inn, um, Sir Storok is finishing up washing the dishes. Um, apparently he did a lot of the cooking, too. Um, and, uh, you roll over in the starlight, pulling your blankets up that have been loaned to you, and drift off to sleep, I assume. Okay. Bliss. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> you dream. I this I dream did. is unlike any dream you remember having in the past. It's a little bit like a vivid hallucination. Because you feel like you have, you know, power to act within the dream. 
And it's a little bit like a vision. But it makes very little sense and is like a dream. More full of emotions and feelings and ideas than it is of sight, smell, sound, and smells, etc. Bliss, you dream of stepping through a hole that is also a tree and entering another place. Your nostrils in your dream are full of this thick, choking perfume. It repulses you, but you can't get enough of it. You feel like you're following the scent deeper and deeper into the green upon green, glowing lights, tiny fairies flit by, circle your head once, twice, thrice, and disappear into the deep green evening. You're back there, back in that place, you feel her, her presence, not physically, but you feel her pulling on your heartstrings. Like a magnet pulling on a compass. No matter how far you go, how deep you run, you're still following that thick perfume, that scent on the air that turns your head stronger than any wine. Each step in a new place, yet it feels so familiar. You're running towards something wild, unexpected, free. It terrifies you, but you can't get enough of it. You crash through leaves and stumble over roots. You need to get your bearings. You need to find where this scent is coming from. Everything around you is spring. It is spring, after all. Life is blooming, and it rubs off on your hands as you climb a tree. Arousal is in the air. Everything is alive. As you reach the top of the tree, the upper branches, you look out over a canopy, a light with glowing plants and tiny creatures flitting about. You hear the cries all around you of night birds dreaming. And then the lights start to wink out like stars being extinguished, a shadow spreads, a pool of inky dark over the forest. Something, something is killing all that life, all that love. And yet, you and all the creatures around you, all the life around you is still being pulled inexorably toward that direction. Into the pool of dark that will kill everything.
deep in the pool of darkness, you can see a circle of tall stones. And then you wake up. Um, it's still night. You've awakened in a cold sweat. Shafts of moonlight causing uh, dust motes to dance in front of your eyes. You can hear voices of some sleepy people talking in other parts of the tower. And the snores of your companions nearby. Bliss sits there and is just breathing heavily as he's recovering from that. He takes that he takes a moment to recover. And he looks over to his bag and he he reaches into it and he pulls out uh, out of a secret compartment in the bag, he pulls out a letter that it looks worn. Looks like it's been opened many and read many, many times. The paper is worn. Um, he opens it and he kind of just scans over the words and he starts to cry, but he keeps reading the whole, he reads the whole thing. He reads all the way through the whole letter. And by the time he gets to the end, he's quietly sobbing, but he, he finishes it. He has to, he has to read the whole thing. Um, uh, to because he has to remember why he cannot go back and then he closes it up he puts it back in the bag and he kind of curls up in his in his bed you know, his tail just kind of like wraps around himself as he just kind of like curls up and tries to go back to sleep after all of that um his makeup's messed up. His he's he's all he's all disheveled, but he's he 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 feels better now. After reading that letter, he feels sort of better than he did when he just woke up from the the dream, and he's I think he's able to go back to sleep. Okay, next morning you all will be able to tell that uh, Bliss had a. He sweat through his sheets. <laughs> um, cool. Bella. Yo. This night you dream. You dream of words on a page. Pages flashing past. Footnotes. The book is put on a shelf and another withdrawn. You're in a library. You can smell the old book smells and feel the leather covers, the pages of parchment turning. There is whispering nearby, an echoing hall of books upon books upon books. It reminds you of Arkney, but it's not Arkney. In your dream, your view pulls out just a tad You see you bent over the desk, wearing the golden armor of Ibo Gruger, poring over a pile of books, searching, searching hungrily. You must find who she is. It must be 
in one of these books. Another person approaches the table, sits down across from you. You can't quite make out her face, but she's wearing a uniform. A mage's robes, but clearly a university uniform. She delicately sets a stack of books down on the table. And in your dream, you don't even have to look at them to know they're all of your books. She spreads them out on the table, opens them one by one. And with each one, she takes a quill. For a moment, your vision is full of this fine quill, a long, elaborate feather. She dips it in the ink pot, opens the first leaf of the book with that sound that's so rich, that sound of crinkling parchment. She reaches down with the point of the quill and where the author's name is written, she scratches it out. She laughs again. <laughs> As if the muse could be found so easily, even here, even by the White Witch. Do you want to do anything in your dream, Bella? Yeah, I'd like to grab the pile of books away from her and just say, excuse me, you're not allowed to do that. The books, she laughs. The books, the sound is like bells. A beautiful laugh. The books kind of fall out from your arms here in this vast university library. The sound echoes. Everyone stops what they're doing, whispering, and turns and looks right at you, Bella. And they start laughing. And you look down and you realize, and it doesn't make sense, but in the dream it works. They all can see that in every one of your books has been defaced. Everyone has had your name scratched off. And you wake up, breathing hard, the smell of ink still in your nostrils, and the books still feeling heavy on your arms are in fact your blankets. I think Bella would just kind of curl up in the fetal position and try to calm herself down. Okay. It's the next morning. Um, you guys can purchase a breakfast. There are specials listed on the shop list. Um, you can, uh, eat your own rations if you, uh, if you wish, uh, there is water for washing up, um, and other special services. Um, I guess I just want to know what you guys want to do before we finish out the session. Um, shortly here, I just want to know what you intend Well, I know a couple of us have a little bit of shopping to do, which mm -hmm. I guess we're handling off screen. Indeed. We are now going to do all shopping between sessions. I think I'm going to change it to you can visit two stores in between sessions. Um, 
And uh, you can visit any two stores in between sessions and buy stuff, absolutely. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Belle is making her way to the library and just, especially, I think especially after her dream last night, she needs to be comforted by books. Okay. Well, um, you will discover that uh, the Croc Hall is um, kind of a friendly, not too scary drug den. Um, yeah, it would be. I asked for <laughs> Um, but kind of what they do is, um, uh, my, uh, Mara Xylosiant, um, what they do is they take this particular drug, um, called Sunlight, and, um, read uh adventure novels oh okay then yeah that sounds awesome um and they have uh quite a lot of varying quality um just adventure novels um just kind of piled up and you just uh what they do is they um she takes she 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 smokes a little uh uh it's like an opium den kind of um takes a little uh, uh smokes a little opium a little crack a little crook um and uh and uh uh kind of sprawls out and um reads a book it's a pretend i mean these are pretend drugs these aren't real they don't do any harm Um, the man with no screen name says, you guys really need to stop falling asleep, yo. <laughs> True enough. Um, but, uh, uh, Mara is interested in talking to you, um, if that's what you want to do as well. Um, or not. Sure. Um, but, uh, Okay. So you guys are gonna do some shopping. Um, was there anything else? Nothing specific. Just blesses. Is, Bliss is um, doing his best to spend as much time as he can around, probably Mavra and Breath. For whatever reason, he just seems to be afraid to be alone, and particularly wants to be with the two strongest people in the group. Not that he's saying that out loud. But I'm sure the two of you can pick up that something has got Bliss spooked, and he kind of just wants to feel safe right now. Okay. Akiri is trying really hard not to bother. I cannot for the life of me remember his name, but the sword wing. Too much? She's trying really hard and doing a decent job at it. But he can probably tell. She's fawning more than a little bit. I'll, he will absolutely love to talk to you. So we can handle that either in Discord or next time. Um, but uh, especially since you seem to like know so many... Uh, <laughs> I know things. Not common knowledge about uh, sword wings. <laughs> I know many things. Was Kiri mildly obsessed with them for a while? <laughs> Still is. Cool. Um, well, he is extremely polite um, in his weird kind of way uh, at all times. Chivalric. Uh, chivalrous and um, okay well we'll we'll pick it up next time guys but um, 
as you are um, doing these things and uh, finishing up breakfast, etc., Avin uh, comes to you all, calls you all, and says, Adventurers! I need your expertise immediately. He takes you outside and shows you these big footprints in the mud all around the tower and these muddy splotches that climbed halfway up the wall in the night and some torn out stones just outside of where you've stored the eggs. Oh boy. Wow. It's a friend. And on that note, <laughs> we are going to call it a night. So thank you all very, very much for playing. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Uh, that was good stuff. And uh, thank you to uh, those who came by and watched or who watched this later. Thank you to have those screen name. Uh, you're awesome as always. Thank you to Jeremy, player of Breath. Thank you to N, player of Akiri. Thank you to Kirsten, player of Bella. Thank you to Nico, player of Bliss. Hey, thanks for playing the whole session, man. I'm really glad you could make it. I was uh, thinking I wouldn't be able to give you your your dream um that the drama on the line but you, like, miss it for the world. <laughs> you made it you made it um glad to be here thank you to Corey, player of vapos and you guys are awesome as well so i bid you all a good one and until next time all right good night everybody night guys good night everyone I think it was.